Welcome to the Garments Engage Crochet Podcast, where I chat about crochet garments and other yarny things. My name is Michelle Ferguson. I'm the crochet pattern designer of Two Brothers Blankets. You can find me at twobrothersblankets.com, on Facebook and Instagram, at Two Brothers Blankets, and right here on YouTube every week for this crochet podcast. Thank you for so much for joining me and for watching. I would love it if you would subscribe to my channel and click that like button. And if you would like to be notified every time I upload a new video, please click that bell at the top of your screen. So I'm really excited today. We have a designer interview to share. Um, I was able to interview Tony of Teal Yarn Crafts. And if you don't already follow Tony, which I might find a bit surprising, um, she is an amazing crochet pattern designer. She uh, has a really big presence here on YouTube as well. She has her own channel with so many great videos, tutorials, informational yarn reviews, all the things uh, she puts out crochet patterns, she puts out Tunisian patterns, she does, like I said, a lot of tutorials and educational stuff. Um, she just, she does it all and she's really amazing at what she does and I really enjoyed talking to her. We talked about her designing journey, how she got started and um, what she's up to now, what she has coming up and it's just really, really, it was a really good fun chat. So I'm going to let you check that out now. Hi everyone, I am so excited to have Tony of TL Yarncrafts here with us today. Hi Tony, how are you? I'm good, Michelle. Thanks so much for the invitation. Thank you for coming on. I'm so excited about this. Um, okay, so let's just start out and have you tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure. Um, so my name's Tony. I'm the crochet designer, educator, soon to be author behind Teal Yarn Crafts. Um, and it's really just a home for crochet design, education, and inspiration. I try to um, just bring every bit of knowledge and excitement that I have about crochet into my business uh, through my patterns and through my tutorials and also through just kind of my community building efforts. Awesome. So how did you get started? Like, how did you learn how to crochet? Uh, so I always love telling the story. So my mom <laughs> actually taught me to crochet when I was a teenager. Um, it was one wow. of those brutally hot summers in Michigan. And I didn't want to go outside. I didn't want to hang out with my brothers. I just was having, you know, you know how you get when you're a teenager. You're like, something's mm -hmm. wrong. I don't know what it is. So I'm just going to annoy people until someone entertains me. Um, so I came around to my mom who has been an avid crocheter, knitter, crafter her entire life. And uh, she started me out with a granny square. So starting from the middle and she said to just keep going. Um, yeah. And I kept going. And once I ran out of one skein, she gave me another. I ran out of the second one. She gave me a third. And it ended up being this big, absolutely hideous camouflage blanket oh god <laughs> terribly <laughs> ugly like anybody who's a fan of red heart super saver knows exactly what camouflage okay. i'm talking about because yeah. they still make it <laughs> um but you know it i think the experience though is what really stuck with me like that was the first first chance that i had of making art that I actually felt like I was good at something that made sense. Like, I think the math of crochet and the repetition of it really mm -hmm. kind of drew me in. So uh, we crocheted that whole summer together. And then I kind of put it down and came back to it uh, once I was in college. Awesome. And you and your mom still like, I think I saw on your Instagram one time you went yarn chopping together or something. Oh, you yeah. guys still do all the crochet and then stuff together, oh, right? Yeah, I think once oh, I actually fine. came back around to crafts, it was a great opportunity for me and my mom to bond and just be able to spend time together and talk yeah. about things that we might not have otherwise. So it's been Aww. really exciting kind of That's feeling like I'm fun. on this journey with her. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah, my mom picked it up a little bit after I started designing too. And so every time I go up there, she's always like asking me questions. So it's really cool. Like it's a bonding awesome. thing for sure. Yeah. It's definitely a, definitely a bonding thing. I'm so grateful for that connection. I know. Yeah. yeah. So how did you get started designing once you picked it back up and all that? So once I got back into crochet, I actually picked up crochet again. Um, I dabbled in it a little bit in college, but really got back into it once I was married. 
Um, and I actually had moved to Ohio from Michigan. So I was in kind of this weird limbo place. I couldn't find a job. It's 2010, middle of the recession. It was just all bad. Couldn't find a job. Um, I was in a new city. I wasn't around my friends and family, brand new wife. Like there was just a lot of change and I needed an outlet. I needed to feel like I had control over something in my life. So I was like, let me find a hobby. Um, and I went to Michael's and I originally started making those Chan Lu bracelets everybody was making back in like, oh gosh, I don't even want to say, I'm not going to date myself. So a while ago, people were making bracelets. So I made those um, and that didn't really stick. Uh, so I went back to Michael's and I ended up in the yarn aisle and it was like, I I felt like I had never left. Like I, it felt like coming home. It felt like I recognize this. This is striking a chord with me. Like I'm going to make this work. So I picked up a whole bunch of yarn as one does when they're brand new, just picking up a bunch of stuff that don't match <laughs> all different weights. I'm picking up hooks and I don't know what goes with what. Um, but thankfully there was a growing community on YouTube and on Etsy to teach people and learning how to read patterns, all that stuff I kind of picked up on my own. So in that way, I feel like to a degree I'm self-taught because uh, once it got time for me to actually get into crochet, a lot of the stitches, reading patterns, understanding, you know, garment fit all of that I had to learn um, and then the designing came because eventually I started making all this stuff for friends and family and they were like yep we're good on the hats and scarves girl thanks a lot we appreciate you and I was like I got that hint I got it <laughs> but I knew I was gonna keep making things so I was like well if my friends and family don't want them who can I give this stuff to so I decided to start selling at craft shows mm -hmm. um, and eventually it got to a point where I wanted to have this very specific piece for my booth at craft shows I had all of these stipulations for this hat and I couldn't find a pattern anywhere um, so I was like well I've been doing this for a couple of years like maybe I can pull some of my favorite parts like some of my favorite features together and make a design um so I did and it ended up being the mega palm beanie which is still mm -hmm. one of my best selling patterns on my website and um yeah I guess kind of the rest is history because I just never stopped uh -huh. after that yeah, yeah exactly that's so interesting because my one like my first few designs are still some of my best sellers like isn't that that you know like <laughs> yeah <laughs> like, which well, I love I because I yeah. yeah, I think there's there's an energy that you have when it's still really brand new. And mm -hmm. I feel like it comes across like I, I I think there are parts within our careers where we really do our best work. And when you're that mm -hmm. hungry and that eager early on, like it comes out in your work, I think so. so. Yeah, that's yeah. really cool. Um, So how many designs do you have? Do you know? Like as of now. <laughs> oh gosh, I have no idea. I know it's well over a hundred. We might actually be pushing 200 at this point because um, I've been designing since 2013, full-time since 2017. And I know last year, for example, I'm pretty sure I, I released like north of 50 patterns last year. Wow. So I mean, this That's number has amazing. to be pretty big. Yeah. yeah I, I should probably like sit down and actually count them because I design a lot for myself, of course, mm -hmm. but then I design a lot for like magazines or other collaborations. Right. So I've got patterns floating around there. And I'm like, oh yeah, I did do that thing. <laughs> <laughs> cool. right, All so, right. Uh, That's <laughs> awesome. So, okay. This, I didn't put this in the email, but tell us about your book. I want to oh, know. Yes. <laughs> so I wish I had a copy to show you. I actually haven't even held the physical book yet, but it lives in my heart. Uh, yeah. So it's called the Tunisian Crochet Handbook. It is my brand new book. It's coming out October 12th, um, released under Abrams. So it is a guide for people who are just learning Tunisian crochet. So the whole first third of the book is instruction. I'm telling you about tools. I'm telling you about stitches. I'm telling you about techniques, everything you need to learn to get started with Tunisian crochet. And then the back half of the book, which is just my pride and joy, is 20 brand new patterns. Ooh, and I'm excited. Oh, me too. <laughs> so it's, I mean, there are accessories, there's shawls, there's wearables, there's home goods, Ooh. like there's a little bit of everything and something for everyone. So you've got kind of your smaller, quick projects, if that's something you're looking for, or you've got those bigger, like really indulgent projects, if you really just want to jump into it, but they're all beginner friendly. They're all meant to be like something that you can complete and really be proud of yourself if you're trying this for the first time. So I'm, I mean, I've been a fanatic for Tunisian crochet for years. So this is, it's really exciting to kind of get something like a physical product of my work. Oh, that's awesome. Is it going to be, is it on Amazon? 
Yes, it's available on Amazon. Pre order? Can we pre order yes, now? Yep, it's available for pre-order on Amazon. Actually, if you go to my website, tlyarncrafts.com, I have a landing page for the book. Okay. Um, so you can pre-order from my site. Now, the pre-orders on my site do include a signed copy of the book. The Amazon ones are not signed. So just an FYI. Okay, there we go. Um, also, also available on my site, I have like this book bundle. So I want to do something really special. Okay. Um, so it's this really beautifully packaged box. It's going to have the signed book. Um, it's going to have a skein of yarn that I, I collaborated with Jake of Ken Yarn for one of the projects in the book. So he's dyeing yarn for that project that I'm going to have available in those boxes. Um, and then I'll also have several other goodies from some of my favorite makers. Um, and it's going to be all packed up real cute and, and sent off. So there's the single okay. book and then also the bundle. you got some options. Awesome. All right. I'll be sure to link that in the description for everyone. Okay. So what is your favorite design or favorite current design because if you're like me it changes often <laughs> it does change it does change I I feel like it often goes between either a cardigan or a shawl like those mm -hmm. are my those are my favorite ones to design for other people blankets are my favorite thing for myself but my current favorite design is the Loveland Light. Um, so the Loveland shawl I created in collaboration with Hugh Loco. We did a whole crochet along. It's very exciting. It's a Tunisian crochet triangle shawl. Um, and then I got so many requests to do a fingering weight version because the original's in DK. So people were like, how can I adapt this for fingering weight? And I was like, I'll figure it out. And I'll just put it in a pattern. And yeah. I did. And it just caught like wildfire wow. because it only takes two skeins of yarn it's best mm. if those two skeins are contrasting because it's got some beautiful striping in it so it's really easy to stash dye for this project uh and then also I, I feel like I haven't seen a Loveland shawl that wasn't gorgeous like, like it's every single color combination it's the prettiest shawl I've ever so seen pretty. I have that so, one it's so pretty do you I, yes. I just, I, I love it because people can really put their own stamp on it. Like mm -hmm. the yarns you choose, it's going to give it its personality. Um, and it's also an opportunity for you to get introduced to Tunisian crochet, which mm -hmm. I'm looking for every chance to do. Uh, so, you know, it's just, it, it, it's got a really low barrier to entry, I would say. You don't have to know a bunch of skills already. You don't have to have a whole bunch of yarn on hand. It's just really fun and easy pattern. Awesome. Yeah, I don't have the light one, but I do have the original and I started it and never finished it. Hey, it's <laughs> but I it's a great one to always come back to. <laughs> yes, it's one of those you. that you can just pick up whenever. Yep. So I need to get back <laughs> into it. Um, okay, so tell us, what is your favorite and least favorite part of being an independent designer? Or the mm. easiest and hardest, or the best and not so good, however you want to <laughs> the word best that. And not so good. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would say the best part of being a crochet designer, in my opinion, is the community. I absolutely love like knowing folks like you and other designers, but also knowing makers or people who make things for makers. Like there's this mm -hmm. whole collection of super talented, excited, enthusiastic people. Um, and I feel like I'm one of those folks and, and to know that I found my people like right. that feels good and it mm -hmm. keeps me energized. Uh, one of my least favorite things, honestly, anything that involves being in front of a computer for like more than 30 minutes, <laughs> like, like I actually, agree. <laughs> actually writing the pattern, not my favorite thing, actually replying to emails. <laughs> I don't love it. Like, it's just as creatives, as artists, we get our energy from making art. And there's yes. a, there's the business side of it that has to be done, but you know, I don't love it. So I don't either. I hear you, especially typing that pattern after you finally get it finished and you're yeah. so excited about it. So excited. And then you got to do all the math. So, or if you've already done all the math, you just got to type the whole thing. Just got to type <laughs> it up. Like, and it's just, a, it's just a little tedious is all. And I, yeah, I, I think yeah. It's just it's our just, nature. I'd rather be crocheting. <laughs> exactly. Our nature as crocheters, we just rather be crocheting <laughs> at yes. all times. <laughs> all the time. Oh, I hear you. Okay, so totally um not doesn't have anything to do with crocheting, but what is your favorite coffee house Starbucks order? Oh, girl, 
That's <laughs> easy. So it depends on the time of year. I'd say mm-hmm. that. Um, I was wondering uh, if you would say that. <laughs> I just can't well, have an idea. <laughs> well, uh, it is pumpkin season again at Starbucks. I always look forward to it because I'm that girl and I'm <laughs> I'm always looking forward to the pumpkin cream cold brew. It's just uh, it's it's a treat. Like it's mm-hmm. it's a really good treat. But on a normal day, my order is a venti americano steam skim two pumps of vanilla like really basic easy peasy coffee probably an extra shot if it's early early in the morning just to get me through like it's it's not the most tasty thing in the world but it is delicious coffee and it's going to give me that energy that I need you know? yeah cool. I knew I was wondering if you say something about the pumpkin <laughs> I have to. yeah I think I'm pretty sure pumpkin came back on the 24th uh, and I still haven't had any yet so no, I, need to me get neither. There. I know yeah. I do too I have struggle between I love the pumpkin spice but then when the Christmas stuff comes out and like their chest praline Ooh. Oh, <laughs> so good like they they always hit the bullseye with, yes, like their with the holidays drinks. yes All the, the holiday drinks love it okay so what advice would you give yourself now to your beginner self mm. knowing what you know now about crocheting or designing or whatever yeah I would say I don't know that I'd tell her to do anything different. Yeah. I feel like I'd want to give the advice to me now because the, okay. the Tony the Tony before was just hungry and excited and just like super enthusiastic. And it was like, I want to be your friend and let's design some stuff together. Like she yeah. was real excited. And I think now one of my biggest challenges is just creating some healthy boundaries around my mm-hmm. business. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that the issue is I, at this point, want to be the Tony that I was then and with yeah. all that energy and all that free time and all that enthusiasm. Um, but now I think I just want different things out of my business and out of my life. And that involves maybe pumping the brakes a little bit, mm-hmm. um, but that, but it's a little easier said than done because there's always so much exciting stuff happening, you know? So yeah. being able to pick and choose my projects a little bit better and getting comfortable saying no, uh, it's, it's tricky. It's tricky yeah. Sure. I can understand that. I get that way too. Like it's, I miss the days of just like, oh, I should design that. You know what I yes. mean? Like, yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and, and now running a full, like a full on business that has become part of the income for our family. It is, I can't just stop everything and design, you know what I mean? Definitely, yeah. And <laughs> so, I think, I think, I, I feel like, and I've, I've had this same conversation with a lot of designers and mm-hmm. I think the, the common thread is we would love to get it back to feeling a little bit more like a hobby right? Having Mm -hmm. a little bit more control over deadlines and the pace Mm -hmm. of things and being able to make stuff when we want to. Um, And and I'm really trying to get back there because that's where, I think that's where my creativity and where all that energy lives. Yes, I totally agree. I totally felt the same way. Like it's just, um, it's a balance. You got to learn to balance. And as creatives, we have a hard time doing that. We do. And we know it. And Um, and we're really slow to fix it. But we know. (laughs) Oh, sure. I've got time for that. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. Like, I can squeeze it in there when. I don't know. I'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. When the time comes and then the deadline hits and you're like, oh, no. (laughs) (laughs) Yep. Yep. I totally understand. Well, Tony, thank you so much for coming on today. Can you tell everyone where they can follow you and find you and shop your patterns and all that fun stuff? Absolutely. You can find me online on Instagram, Pinterest, Facebook, and YouTube at TL Yarn Crafts. And definitely check out my website, tlyarncrafts.com and pick up a copy of the Tunisian Crochet Handbook. Awesome. Yes, I will link all that for everyone in the description. All right, guys, thank you so much. Be sure to leave Tony a comment and give her a follow and we will chat again soon, Tony. Thank you. Bye. Okay. Aren't you guys so excited for Tony's book? I know I am. Um, Tunisian is not my strongest. (laughs) Um, I'm not very good at it. So I'm very excited to check out her book and hopefully learn some new things. I will put all her links um, in the description so that you can check it out and get your own copy and all that fun stuff. Um, All right, let's talk about what's in my wit bag. So 
as you know from last week, I am kind of in limbo. I finished my designs for 2021 that are going to publish this year. Um, they're either in testing or about to be in testing. Um, and then I have some commission stuff coming up, but I'm waiting on yarn or contracts or all that. So I'm kind of in the middle of like, I have nothing really. I do have things coming up, but right at this moment, I have nothing. And like from the month of September, I've kind of decided I just want to work on something for myself, like a little selfish project. Um, now I do have whips that I need to finish and get done, but um, I just really want to make something for myself and have that like accomplishment. And like I know I design and when I design my sweaters and stuff, I, does, I, do, I do make it for myself, but it's a little bit different when you're just like making it and not designing it and not working up all the math and the steps and all that. So that's what this is gonna be. Long story short, when I designed the Aspen cardigan um, way back when, I think it was 2018, early 2018 maybe, um, I designed it in Brava Sport in this beautiful dark burnt orange color that I think is discontinued, but um, Shortly after that, I put it in the mail to be photographed for a magazine publication and it got lost in the mail. Um, so uh, it never went to its destination and it never came back to me, never saw it again, um, which was really disappointing because I sent it off to be professionally photographed because I don't really love those pictures that I have of the Aspen cardigan. Um, not to be like, to say too much, but that was a really hard time in my life. Like that was a, a season of life that was just not so pleasant. Um, and I feel like I can see that in the photos. Like I can see it in my face. Um, I don't know if, if you guys have ever felt that way, but like if you look at old pictures during some a hard time of life um, or a hard season and it, you can tell, like, I don't know, I can just tell. <laughs> or it's just a reminder, I don't know. <laughs> but I don't love the pictures. I feel like I look like my life is not going so well in those pictures. <laughs> so um, I've always wanted new ones of the new pictures, but then the cardigan disappeared. So I've always wanted to make myself another one, never got around to it. So guess what I'm doing? I'm making myself another Aspen cardigan. Last week, when I was finishing up my last sweater pattern for the year, I was using Swish DK. It calls for Swish DK. Swish DK is another yarn from We Crochet. Uh, it is a 100% superwash merino wool yarn. It's definitely on the nicer end, uh, but it is so soft and so nice to work with. It's very smooth. It's just, oh. So great to wear, love it. Um, and there's this one color I was using that it really stood out to me and I was like, I would really like to make a cardigan in this color. This would look cute as a cardigan. So <laughs> I am going to use this color, Squirrel Heather in Swish DK for a new Aspen cardigan. So I need to order the yarn like today, <laughs> um, as soon as possible and grab it, but I wanted to, I had this as left over from the, the sweater pattern that I had just finished. I wanted to work up a gauge swatch to make sure it would work. Now this is a DK, that was a sport, but if you watch my season one, episode two uh, review of Brava Sport, you know they've changed the pliers. And, um, but I use the original, for the original, before they changed the pliers, Brava Sport for the Aspen cardigan. But even then I state that it's, I still considered it a thicker sport weight. To me, it's just more of a DK, especially now with the new supplier, but even before. So anyways, it's a DK. This to me is a very true DK. Um, so I decided to make sure it works. I had to go down one hook size to a G, um, but it worked perfectly. So I think, no, actually I think it was a little short with the number of rows, but that's an easy fix. I can just add length. Um, it looks so nice. Like those are the hair, herring bone stitches and I just love them, love them. So I'm really excited about this. I'm going to order the yarn. I'm gonna probably just order the, even though I have a little leftover, order the entire amount needed just so I don't have to worry about dye lot issues or anything like that. Um, and get started. So I will take you guys along on that for, um, I don't know, I may have to stop 
like it is a cardigan so it's a bigger project when I do get those that yarn and contracts and stuff for the uh, commission stuff and I do have something I want to have ready for January but I'm gonna work on it as much as I can and I'll take you along with me on the progress of it um, as soon as I get the yarn and all that. So I'm really, 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 really excited about it. So um, it'll be nice to just make something for me. <laughs> so anyways, that's what's sort of kind of in my whip bag coming up. So, and I'll take you along with me as I work on it um, and show you the progress and all that. All right, so for today's review, product review we're going to do, I'm just going to share um, because I'm a little bit slacking on washing yarn because I know that's a big part of um, my my yarn reviews is how it washes up. That's an important part that you guys like to know about. So I'm a little slacking on the washing. <laughs> so I got to do some more of that. But today I wanted to just share some of my go-to products, favorite products that I love for crocheting and um my business to running my business. You guys really liked the Swift um, and Yarnwinder review that I did last season. So I figured we'll kind of do something like that. But this will be a little more, just a few at a time. Um, okay, so first thing is these awesome, super sharp, it's like so sharp they come with a case, but I don't know where the case is. I lost the case. Uh, scissors. I got these at We Crochet. They are my favorite. I have multiples. They are just so sharp that they just cut right through the yarn so fast. No snagging, no issues. I just love them and I need to be careful. <laughs> I just love them. They're really sharp and really great. Big go-to in crochet. Um, and I'll link them. Also is my yarn bowl. So I just got this, I think last year. Um, during one of their sales and I bought it. So I bought it on sale. All the years I've crocheted, I've never really thought I needed a yarn bowl. And technically I don't, but I got it on, like I said, I got it on sale. It was like 40 or 50% off. I think I paid like 20 bucks for it. Um, if you run a crochet business, it's really nice for pictures too. Like it's just a really nice wood bowl for pictures but I also like use it for what it's you it's for um also so when you cake up a yarn um some hand dyed yarn or whatever and stick it in there like when you know how you when you're center pulling and eventually it all like collapses on top of itself this just keeps it like all together and even if I'm having like this is just a regular yarn bowl ball um it just keeps it all together and then like when I move like if I'm crocheting in my office and then I go crochet in the living room or if I'm going somewhere and I want to crochet in the car, I just take the bowl and stick it in the <laughs> bag and it goes with me. Um, it just, it's really great for keeping all the yarn together. Now I would not, probably would not pay much more than what I did pay, which I think was $20 for a yarn bowl. Um, some of them are really, really nice though and worth every penny. Um, but I do find this useful and I use it a lot, lot more than I ever expected to. So big go-to for me for crocheting as well. Now let's talk about some business um, stuff. So this, where am I pointing? There we go. This uh, dress form, I think I got it on Amazon. I use that a lot um, for staging some of my makes. I have a scarf on there now. I don't know if you can see it very well. Um, especially like now that I'm doing some commissioned work for other companies, I'm not wearing and modeling the designs that I'm making. They, I send it off for them to photograph and have modeled. So I use that to put it on and show, like send a picture of the finished product to the people I'm making it for, um, which is really nice. It's great for craft shows if you're using it, if you're doing craft shows, um, pictures for Etsy, all that. I just find that very nice and professional looking without having to actually model the item yourself if you don't want to do that or don't feel comfortable doing that. So that's one thing. And then my bazillion tripods. <laughs> I have a bunch. I have at least four right here. Um, so this is my little one that I use. This one's great. It you put your phone on it. Uh, you can bend it to make it every which way, go every which way. Uh, you can put it on your desk. It's great for like Instagram stories, lives. Um, yeah, all kind of pictures, whatever, using your phone. This one's really nice. I've had this one for a while. 
really like it. Then recording on my, this video on my, with my video camera on it is my really nice fancy, cost me a lot of money, um, tripod that I use. That one holds my camera and my video camera, like an actual video camera um, that I use to record videos. Um, and then I have another full-sized one that holds your phone, but it like stands up like a big full-sized one. Uh, it's great for, I use it and it folds up real small too, kind of like the same height as this one. So I use it for everything from recording reels to uh, photos to videos, all kind of stuff. And then I have another one that actually clips onto your desk or your table and goes overhead. And mine's like real mechanical, like it doesn't have a bendy, like some of them are bendy like this. Um, mine's real mechanical and it like, you lay it to where you want it and then you can tighten it at the elbow of it, <laughs> whatever it is. Um, and that's what I make my overhead video. So I put my phone on it and clip my phone to it and record my overhead videos on that. So those are like vital to my job. Um, so if you are a designer or even just a maker that sells products and needs pictures or videos um, or whatever, a good tripod. And I will try to link all of these. I think I have links for them. I'm pretty sure I got all of them on Amazon. <laughs> so I'll put those, those links in the description as well. Those are my big go-tos like that I use a lot. And then of course my hooks, I use furls, streamlines most of the time. Um, and my camera, this is what I take pictures or my husband takes pictures of me with um, for designs. And then I have a video camera. I think it's a Canon. I think they're both Canon. This one is a Canon um, that I use. This is a DSLR. You don't necessarily need all that, but that's what I use. Um, so those are my go-tos and those are my favorite. And I really love them all. And they all get good product, re good reviews for me, from me. Like I said, I'm not very brutal these days. So <laughs> anyways, um, Next week, I will be back with more uh, good information for you about crocheting. And I think we're going to talk a little bit about designing also. So, um, yeah, let me know if you have any questions or comments, uh, any questions for Tony. I'll make sure she sees them. And I will see you guys again next week. Bye.